tell me a little bit about your art practice. Um, well, with this series, the Haystacks, um, whereby I'm painting the source, uh, I decided to paint it with the source. So what that means is that I'm using pigments um, that I get from a shop in Paris. Uh, the very good quality pigments, which means they're quite close. They haven't; they're not that far removed from the ground. Um, I mix those with egg yolk, and um, that's my binder. Uh, then I also add in like walnut oils, um, safflower oils, and water, depending on the consistency that I'm looking for. Um, and that style of paint is actually called tempura paint. It's an ancient form of paint making um, that artists that artists used actually before the Renaissance time. Um, so that's what, that's what I'm doing here today and I'm going to show you actually now, I'll just um, start making some paint from scratch. So for example if I'm making, like working on the blue sky here um, and actually going to add, see now, I'm going to start, um, I'm going to add in some white to here um, to the clouds, some highlights in the clouds. So. What you do is I get some egg yolk, as you can see there, and then I get some of the white on the glass plate here, and then you mix it in to like a paste. Now sometimes, if you want, if you want your paint to be incredibly smooth, use one of these pestles. And what you actually do, I'm actually just going to get some more egg yolk and show you. Hopefully, you get some more of your paint. And what you do is you actually grind it. And it just gives you an incredibly smooth paste. Sorry, I need on. I want to make that paint a bit thicker. So this painting is a new departure for you. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Or, yeah, yeah, I've always found over the years of my art, good ideas, you never remember really how they happened or when they happened or why they happened. Um, with the, but there's one particular day that I do remember. Um, I had been down in Baroda Stud actually uh, um, doing a, um, as part of a documentary um, where I was painting the horses. And we were down in the stud farm with a woman called Tamso Doyle, who helped me a lot when um, I was when when I was working with the Curra in studying uh, uh, the portrait of a horse. And I so normally when I come, when I was coming back from the Curra, because when I was the resident artist down there, I'd be up and down a lot. I'd go the motorway way as everybody does. Um, and because I've been in Baroda Stud in Newbridge, I ended up on the old Cork Dublin Road. Um, and all I actually just so happened to have all my equipment, all my cameras in the boot of my car, and I was driving past this field, which um, it's it's a fa uh, old family land. My cousins own it now, but at one point my uh, grandparents owned it. And as I looked over, the sun was just um, literally coming down through the the. the uh, through the clouds and it was it was it was quite a dark sky still a hint of summer still there so the sun was trying to come down through the clouds and it was this freaking kind of laden heavy sky like it was literally almost about to rain and it came down and it was dappling onto the field the harvest had come in at this stage and there was bales of hay like round bales of hay uh, you know like throughout the field and just to see the sunlight coming down and hitting them and it's like oh my god it looked like god was just shining down from heaven and um, pulled over stopped the car got out my cameras and went into the field, lay down in the field, trying to get up and close as personal to the haystacks as I possibly could. Why, I don't know, but it just felt like the right thing to do. Tell me a little bit about your previous work when you were working with horses. Where the horses came from was, I had been painting actually people um, portraits and uh, been doing that for a number of years. Um, and I was actually studying the life of the Celtic tiger, which meant uh, going to sunny places, watching the Irish um, party. And uh, I had just finished, um, it just had a very successful exhibition in 2008. I went back to Ibiza and spent a month there um, observing, um, kind of again on the edge of society, looking in. And I just felt that it was no longer new and exciting. I was appreciating the images that were presenting themselves in front of me with my cameras, but it, my my heart is no longer beating like mad. 
Uh, I remember going back home and, and meeting with my manager at the time and saying, God, what am I going to do? Um, I, the wonderment is gone and the, you know, the viewer will pick up on that. Um, what am I going to paint next? And he suggested horses. Um, and I was like, horses? Why horses? And he said, well, technically they're very hard to master. Um, as an artist, you need to be constantly improving your skill set, getting better, evolving. Um, so that's where the, the horses first started. Uh, from there, my mum's side of my family is actually from Kildare, and I would have spent a lot of time there growing up. Um, they all uh, work in the horse industry one way or another. It's the really big horses, you know. Tell me about the scale of the work and painting at such a large scale. I think, to be honest, I, I, di I didn't feel like I had um, a, a, an option or an alternative to paint smaller. What I picked up with the horses the first um, the first day that I actually started observing them with my cameras uh, was down in uh, Willie Mullins' yard. He's a very famous um, national hunt um, trainer. Um, and he'd have, he'd have up to about 200 horses in his yard. Um, and um, when I went down there thinking, God, this will be grand. Like they walk in the park and observe them, um, you know, over a number of weeks, go back to my studio, paint, put on an exhibition within a year or two. Um, having spent a morning there with him and he couldn't have been nicer um, and kinder and more patient with me. I remember leaving there bawling my eyes out, going, oh my God, who do I think I am? What have I got myself into? how am I going to do these uh, horses justice? Um, because I suppose it was for the first time, I would have gone horse riding and hunting as a child, but really it was the, the first time that I'd really, really, I suppose, studied them, observed them in detail. And I just couldn't get over their their grace, their elegance, their power, their humility. Um, they're just an amazing animal. And I thought, how can I do these justice on I suppose a regular size canvas, and um, so from there, I so that's where the the larger canvases um came about, and then equally very large frames around them again. But again, it was just to I suppose celebrate the majesticness of the horse.